student care. And on behalf of this congregation here in Akadu and sister congregation in Crossgar, can I express sincere sympathy to Alistair? And I know that Alistair, you were minister of this church for 29 years and roughly 26 minister in Crossgar. And you and June spent many happy years here ministering. And indeed, I understand that your youngest daughter was born during your time here. It is a sad occasion, but we do rejoice that those who know Christ the Savior go to be with him, which, as the Apostle Paul reminds us, is far better. But can I express sincere condolences to the immediate family, to Alistair, recognizing the long and happy marriage that you enjoyed with June and how important she was as your soulmate, your helper, and one who encouraged you and worked with you. We remember the children, Christine, her husband, Chris, David, and wife, Elaine, Rosemary, and your husband, Mark. Also sisters of June, Sandra and Dorothy, and brother-in-law, Joe, who will be taking part in our service today. And then the four grandchildren, Ellen and Joy, Andrew and Joseph, and others who are gathered here today and to remember the life of June. We do give thanks to God for her life, and we celebrate all that she meant to the family, to the friends who are gathered here, and indeed to the various congregations in which uh, Alistair and June ministered together. And it was very much, I understand, a partnership in their work in the Lord. I'm glad today that a number of congregations are represented by means of their clerks of session and spouses, that being Euro and Gortnesse, Agadui and Crossgar. Thank you also to ministers who will take part in this service this morning, uh, to the convener of Euro, Reverend Richard Gregg, who will pray in the service, brother in of June, Reverend Joe Sweeney, who will bring the scriptures, and then the Reverend Robert McMullen, Minister Emeritus in Euro, but here in the capacity as a friend of June, who will bring the tribute later and bring God's word. We are here to praise God and to thank God for the life of June and pray for the family. We take comfort from the words of scripture. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God. They are in peace. And the words of the psalmist, beautiful words, God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in the day of trouble. But the words of Jesus bring great comfort from John's gospel. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Let us commit this time to God as we seek his blessing and his help. Eternal Heavenly Father, we come before you as the God who made all things, the God who is in control, the sovereign over all, and the one who has ordained all our days before one of them come to pass. We come today to give thanks for the life of June. We come to share with Alistair and the family, and we come also to worship you. We pray that we would sense your nearness and that by your Holy Spirit, you would lead and guide all that is said and done. And may the lovely name of Jesus be glorified. We pray this in our Savior's name. Amen. Thank you this morning to Ethne for playing for us and for those who are assisting with the audio visual. On your sheet, the opening praise chosen by the family is that lovely hymn, How Deep the Father's Love for Us, How Vast Beyond All Measure. After we sing this hymn, uh, the Reverend Greg is going to come up and lead us in prayer, and then the Reverend Sweeney will read God's word, and Robert, uh, Reverend Robert McMullen will bring the tribute. So first we sing to God's glory these beautiful words, how deep the Father's love for us.
Let us bow together in prayer. Jesus, stand among us in your risen power and let this time of worship be a hallowed hour. Breathe the Holy Spirit into every heart and bid the fears and sorrows from each soul depart. And thus, with quickened footsteps, we pursue our way watching for the dawning of eternal day. Lord God Almighty, as we bow in your presence this day, we come, Lord, with mourning, with sadness, with pain. <coughs> but Lord, we come to you today also with thanksgiving and with praise. And we look to you because you are the great one, the almighty, the everlasting. You are the one who is creator of all things. You are the king of kings and the ruler of all. And we thank you today, Lord, that you have called each one of us into your service that we, as your children, Lord, might bring glory to your name. And so, Lord, as we bow before you today, we ask for your comfort and for your strength. We thank you, Lord, that you have proved yourself faithful down through the years in our lives. We can look back, Lord, over those many times whenever you have blessed us. You have drawn alongside us whenever we have been in need. You have come and granted us your strength in our times of weakness. And therefore, today, Lord, we trust in you afresh. And we ask, Lord, for your continued presence and blessing and help to be upon us. Lord, we remember all those who mourn here today and we ask for your strength. We pray especially, Lord, for the family and we ask that you would be near to them and bring comfort to each one. And Lord, we pray that in those moments today, whenever we feel weak, whenever we feel unable to look ahead, we pray, Lord, that we might find hope in your word and hope in the promises that you have given to us. Lord, we thank you that you came to this earth and lived a perfect life, that you went to the cross instead of us and took our sin upon yourself. And we thank you, Lord, for the hope that you have brought to us through your resurrection and the promise of eternal life. And so, Lord, trusting in you today, we bring these our prayers, and we rely upon you. And now we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I've actually got three little passages of scripture that I want to refer to, but before I do so, Alistair, Christine, David, and Rosemary can I say thank you for the privilege of being able to be able to do this today. I consider it an honor. Uh, I don't take it lightly. 
It's nice to be back in Akadui Church, but it's just sad that it's a sad occasion like this. Though I must admit, I kind of feel among friends here. Because you see, the Reverend Greg and I went to college together. And I understand that my daughter Pamela taught the Reverend McMullen's children. And I only found out this morning that my brother married the Reverend Jones and his wife. So you see, I do feel among friends. Can I tell you a wee story before I read? It's, it's, a, it's a true story. Uh, it happened at a funeral of a lady that I, I, I sort of knew. Uh, and I was at her funeral service, as I say, and, and uh, the minister was preaching. And, and he, said, he said, you know, some people would say she's looking down and smiling at us now. And of course, we might say that maybe June is looking down and smiling at us now. And he said, no, she's not. Of course, everybody thought, well, what on earth is he going to say next? He said, of course she's not. She's too busy looking straight into the face of Jesus. And that's what June's doing now. She's looking straight into the face of Jesus. Praise God. Psalm 16. Keep me safe, my God. For in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord... You are my Lord, apart from you I have no good thing. I say of the holy people who are in the land. They are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out libations or blood to such gods or take up their name on my lips. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You are my lot secure. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart instructs me. I keep my eye always on the Lord. With him at my, my right hand I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. And then from John chapter 14. Jesus comforting his disciples. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. And just one more wee verse that I know meant an awful lot to June at a very low time, difficult time in her life. And Christine, I think it means a lot to you. And of course to the rest of the family. It's from Isaiah chapter 40. And it simply says, He tends his flock. Like a shepherd, he gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. This is the word of the Lord.
Alistair, it has been a privilege and an honour to know you and June as friends, uh, to serve alongside you in ministry, and then to have been your minister for nearly 20 years. And I want to thank you for inviting me to share this short tribute to your dear June this morning. Barbara Bush was First Lady of the White House from 1989 to 1993. Speaking about the family, she once said, to us, family means putting your arms around each other and being there. Alistair, that family that started all those years ago with a date in Derry has put its arms around you many times down the years but none more so than over these past difficult months, and in particular, these past difficult days. What started with June Ruddock's marriage to Alistair in St. Patrick's Church in Coleraine on December the 15th, 1965, was blessed with the arrival of three children, Christine, David, and Rosemary. As your ministry down the years moved to Donegal, then Green Island, then Ahadui, later then with Cross Gar, and then after retirement to Gortnessy, while at the same time enjoying fellowship in New Rule, June was always by your side, encouraging you, supporting you, complimenting you, no doubt at times correcting you, reminding you, but above all, loving you. You came as a package, as a partnership, Alistair, you described your life together as a lovely marriage. It was all the more blessed with Christine, David, and Rosemary, and then Chris, Elaine, and Mark. But the real pleasure, what put the real smile on her face and gave June the real pride she had in her family was the next generation of Ellen and Joy and Andrew and Joseph. You four don't need me to tell you how much pleasure you give to your granny June. She was so proud of your achievements and you were always a topic of conversation in any visit. She even took great delight in trying to converse with me in football language, something that you, Joseph, had been educating her in. However, her knowledge of the Premier League seemed to be mostly confined to Chelsea from what I can remember. But pleasure in family, love for her family, and delight in what the family was doing was there even before that God incident that led to her meeting the young theological student from McGee by the name of Alistair Kerr, for it was found in her own birth family. James and Harriet Ruddock rejoiced in the safe arrival of their baby daughter on June the 30th, 1939, hence the name, I presume. One day later, and she might have been called something else. She would eventually become a sister to Sandra and Dorothy and sister-in-law to Tom and Joe, as well as an aunt to their children. To all of you, to whatever generation you belong to, uh, within this family circle, can I pass on the sincere sympathy of Christine and myself, and indeed all the church families that you have ministered in and have had the pleasure of knowing you. We too mourn June's passing, but not like you, because she was part of you as you were part of her. May you all know the peace of God for this moment the strength of God for the journey ahead and the joy of the Lord knowing that June is in the presence of the Lord Jesus. That all the limitations and restrictions of body and mind are now lifted. That her little world of that corner chair where she sat 24 hours a day and at times imprisoned her has been left behind for the freedom of the hope that she trusted in ever since she committed her life as a young woman to the Lord Jesus Christ. It was that faith which sustained her 
and which inspired you and us when we were in her presence or received an early morning text message from her. It was that faith which now allows us to read Psalm 16 with great confidence. Psalm 16 that Joe read to us is a psalm full of hope. Let me share two thoughts that come from the final verse which you read to me, Alistair, when we called to see you and the family the other night. Verse 11 reads, You make known to me the path of life. You fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Here we find, first of all, hope in life after death. David here has a glimpse of life after death. There will be a continuation of his relationship with the Lord begun on earth. Verse 10 reads, You will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You see, David looks forward to being with the Lord forever. And that was June's hope. And when the journey got hard, it became her desire. And now, in her earthly passing, it has been fulfilled. And this is our glorious hope too, something that gives comfort for tomorrow. But the reality of life is that we have to live in the today. And so, secondly, we find here hope for the present, because David writes, you make known to me the path to eternal life. God sets a path of life before us to follow here on earth as disciples, as friends, as children of God. And it was a path that June desired to walk in and longed to share the journey with others as well. In the midst of the pandemic, I read this psalm, and in my devotional notes for that day, I underlined these words. Why is David so hopeful? It is, it is because his whole life is centered on the Lord. That focus saw its practical and compassionate outworking in how June chose to use her life. June's life was all about others, but especially those for whom life was a struggle. From developing the special needs department of the new school in Bally Sally, the Spina Bifida to the family fund, she cared for those who needed that extra helping hand in life. Willowbrook was her great interest in retirement. She was a founding member of the Friends Group back in 2002, serving as treasurer for many years. She loved sharing in all the activities which were organized for the tenants. And I know that they will be sad with the news of her passing. She had a great interest in politics. She loved Robert Peston, the ITV commentator. So she must have been one of the few people who could actually understand what he was on about. She loved baking, cooking, hospitality. She was an encourager befriender, a worker. She was respected by all she met and all who worked with her. She was deeply appreciative of all that was done for her, but she preferred to be doing it for others. One little hymn sums up so well her Christian walk and service of what she wanted to do and be. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey and companions on the road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load. I will weep. <clears throat> I will weep when you are weeping. When you laugh, I laugh with you. I will share your joy and sorrow till we've seen this journey through. June Kerr was a friend to all of us, but she was only your wife, Alistair. And she was only your mother, Christine and David and Rosemary. And she was only your mother-in-law, Chris and Elaine and Mark. 
And she was only your granny, Ellen and Joy and Patrick and Andrew. And she was only your sister, Sandra and Dorothy. So your loss today is the greatest, but also so is your gratitude for knowing June in the special way that you did. And so it is my prayer that all of you, along with the rest of us who are here, to stand with you and support you with our love and prayers, might rejoice in June's hope of life after death, but also be supported by the hope that we have for the present of God's presence with us for this new stage of the journey and this new chapter of your life story. The Reverend DJ had a great phrase which he used many times on an occasion such as this and one that you will readily recognize, Alistair. With confidence we can confirm that with June her faith is now realized, her hope is now satisfied, and her home is now occupied. So often our dear friend David would have ended a funeral tribute with the following words, and so too do I. Thanks be to God for every memory we have of June Kerr. Thank you. Let's bow in prayer for a moment. Father, we do indeed give you thanks for the life of June Kerr, for the gifts that you gave to her, for the personality that you grant to her. And we give you thanks most of all for her trust and faith in Jesus as her personal Savior. And because of that, we are confident that she is in your nearer presence. We thank you indeed for the long and happy marriage that June enjoyed with Alistair. And Lord, we again lift him up before you today, praying that you will sustain him and strengthen him. And Lord, we know that life will be very different now that June has gone, but we pray that he would know your touch in a special way and that you will fill that vacant place with your loving presence each day. We thank you for June as a mother to Christine, to David and to Rosemary, and as a mother-in-law to Chris, Elaine and Mark. And we thank you for the precious times the children will remember of a devoted mother, for all the wise guidance that she granted to them, and for the loving care that they received from her. We thank you also for the grandchildren who remember a loving and proud grandmother. And we ask, Lord, that Ellen and Joy and Andrew and Joseph will know your blessing, will know your comfort as they mourn the loss of a loving grandmother. And Lord, as you look further back, we remember Sandra and Dorothy, siblings of June. And Lord, we know they'll have precious memories growing up together. May they know your touch today and also brother-in-law Joe, and all here who are gathered today as friends of June. Lord, may they sense your presence and know your wonderful peace. And we thank you that you give a peace that is beyond all comprehension, beyond all understanding. And we pray that each one in their hearts today will know that amazing peace, and that, Lord, you will touch us all and remind us of your unfailing love. We thank you for the promises in your word, and we thank you that you tell us that if we cast our care upon you, you will care for us. You will give rest to those who are weak and burdened. And we pray, Lord, that each of us will turn to you and know your touch today, but very especially the family of June. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. We are going to sing the closing praise chosen by the family. It speaks about heaven. We heard about that in the readings and from Robert. A reminder that June is there 
with her Savior. And heavenly love abiding, no change my heart shall fear, and safe as such confiding, for nothing changes here. Just to clarify that after the committal, uh, there is food in the church hall, and Alistair and family will not be lining up to greet people, but after the committal, please make your way to the church hall. I will give thanks for food at the graveside. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray today that you'll be near to all who sorrow, especially the family of June Care. And Lord, we understand that loving June the most, they will miss her most dearly. We pray, Lord, that you'll comfort them with your presence, that you will support them by your Holy Spirit and encourage them with the knowledge that Jesus died and rose again, that they need not sorrow as those who have no hope. Lord, we thank you that you had been near and present with us in the service of thanksgiving and worship, and we pray that we'll continue to sense your presence as we leave this church building for the committal service. And now, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one, now and forevermore. Amen.